So iPadOS 16 has been out for developers to try out for about a month now. And if you're anything like me and you use your iPad as your main computer, then Stage Manager is a feature that we've been wanting ever since back in 2019 when Apple split up iOS and iPadOS. But just because we got floating windows, a new version of multitasking, some real secondary monitor support, does that mean that it can finally really replace a traditional laptop? The stage manager brings some simple nuanced things like being able to use your iPad in clamshell mode or being able to do something as simple as being on a Zoom call and not losing video when going to a secondary application or a third application. So that's what I wanted to go over today. Some of those nuanced details that we go through with our everyday lives using a traditional desktop or laptop computer and see if stage manager is that final answer for everybody to, I guess, at least have the option to go with the iPad Pro as their main and only computer. But before we get started, please, a big PSA. This is only in beta three right now and it's still very buggy, especially when you go into secondary monitor support. So if you have a secondary iPad, then maybe it will be fun to install iPadOS 16. But if you're using it as your main computer, be warned that you might get crashes, it might bug out, some of the applications won't work the same way. So please just be aware of that if you do decide to install iPadOS 16 beta onto your main device. But without further ado, let's see if Stage Manager on iPadOS 16 can finally replace your laptop. Let's talk about it. So there are two quick things that I wanna show everybody before we get started. And first was the actual build number and version of iPadOS 16 that we're on. So if we go to the About section, go to the iPadOS version, we are on iPadOS 16.0 with version 20A5312G, which is the Beta 3 moniker for that G. And then secondly, to make sure we all have the Stage Manager setting turned on, just make sure you go into your control settings and you'll see this new little icon which references Stage Manager being turned on right now. If I turn it off, then that means it's turned off and we're gonna have the same old multitasking that we've had for forever. So if I open up Safari, you'll see that we have the same multitasking like this, but then if I turn on Stage Manager, you can see that it changes up a little bit. So you get this new little splash screen, we're gonna turn on Stage Manager, we'll turn it on a couple times, and you'll see as we go through this video that there are some bugs associated with being in such an early software with such a new feature like Stage Manager, but you can see that now it's all broken up into different resizable windows because we are in Stage Manager mode. So one thing that I will mention about Stage Manager mode and iPadOS 16 in general is that if you do not plug it into a secondary monitor, then honestly, it's relatively stable. As you can see, I have three windows here. I can pull in my notes app over here. Everything is resizable. I can make this smaller, click on this one, make this one bigger if I want to. I can even full screen it if I drag this all the way over and it replaces everything there. I can swipe back up. So the stability is honestly not that bad when it comes to just using Stage Manager and the floating windows situation on the iPad Pro without secondary monitor support. It's not really until you plug in a secondary monitor, which I'm about to do right now, that things really start to kind of break up for us and it's not a very pretty sight. So if you give it a second, it's recognizing that there's a monitor being used and you can see that we have a 44 inch monitor. So this is an ultra wide monitor that now is having a completely different home screen for us to be able to use. But once you start going in here, it starts to kind of break everything down. Everything looks a little bit different, although right now it's not too bad. With the betas, as they get better and better, they are getting a little bit more stable. But just be aware that there are crashes associated with especially that secondary monitor support. So one of the biggest questions that I got asked about the secondary monitor support is if it works in clamshell mode, which just means you know any other laptop like a Windows PC or any MacBook Air or MacBook Pro for that matter will still work when the computer is closed. So if I close this down, you'll see that the screen goes black so it does not work in clamshell mode. But when you do open it up, you can see that the screen comes right back to life. So it's quick when it does get opened up, but just be aware that it does not work in clamshell mode. So if you decide to maybe fold this up and wanna put it off to the side or something like that and get it out of the way, that will not work, at least with this version of Stage Manager. Another pretty commonly asked question is, will Stage Manager work with a secondary monitor even if you don't have a Magic Keyboard? So the simplest way to do it is to actually show you. So you can see that it's completely taken off the actual Magic Keyboard and it still works fine. If I move the orientation, it still works. I can still press the three dots and move this to the upper display, so that secondary display. It's gonna be weird, you can't really control anything unless you have an external mouse like I do here. So I can still move it up and control what's ever on the top screen, but if you don't have an external mouse, then obviously you won't be able to control anything that's on that secondary display. Some other questions that came up were, does it only work with a USB-C powered you know, cable or can you use an HDMI cable with a dongle? 
in order to get the stage manager to work you can absolutely use any form of video out as long as you have the correct dongle so it'll work with hdmi display port even vga if you have the correct usb-c hub or usb-c dongle it's not only for thunderbolt or usb-c Something else that's interesting to find out is how iPhone only applications like an Instagram or Coinbase or something along those lines actually opens up on the iPad Pro with Stage Manager turned on. So if I open up Coinbase, you can see that it is a little bit wonky. It does open up, which is totally fine. And you can still multitask with it, but you can't really make it bigger. So if I try to make it bigger, it kind of inflates, but then goes back to normal. And then if I kick it up to the top screen, which again, if you guys do want to know how to move it from this bottom main screen to the top screen, you can't click and drag it like you would on a normal desktop situation you have to click the three dots and then move it to the display but you can see it's a little bit broken obviously we're still in beta so there's some kinks that need to be worked out and even if i open instagram down here it's still kind of blacked out but one thing that i do want to let you guys know is if i go back here it does open up and kind of fix itself even though the dock is kind of in the way so apple has a few things to do to iron this out but you can still multitask with other applications that are ipad applications and even other iPhone applications, it's just the iPhone applications cannot be enlarged or really modified the same way that something like this files application can be, where I can move it up, make it bigger, slide it, make it smaller. Those are kind of reserved for iPad only applications. But as you can see, I have an ultra wide monitor. This is a 44 inch long monitor diagonally. And you can see that you can still grab these applications and they kind of fit well. Yes, there's some empty space that could be taken advantage of a little bit more, but overall I am impressed with how well it does work with stage manager mode turned on. And normally if an application doesn't open up right away, especially in this beta, if you move it into this little shelf over here, so if I grab this and move it over to the side shelf and then bring it back, it will kind of reload itself in the RAM, I guess you would call it. And then it does open up. But you can see that everything kind of works as it should be. Again, a lot of empty space on the right and left that isn't being used. But one nice thing about it is that you can actually go like full screen on this. So if I pull this all the way out, you can see that I now have LumaFusion that works relatively well and can be resized however you see fit. And you can scroll through it. Everything works as advertised. These missing clips are actually just not even on my iPad. That's why they're not being shown. But you can see that the clips that are on the iPad do work fine. And then if I wanna just make it smaller again, go here and all the applications in the background are still there and they're still live. I can click on them and do whatever I see fit. Now, when it comes to audio, when you are plugged into a secondary display, no matter how you're plugged into that secondary display, whether it's with a USB-C, Thunderbolt, HDMI, the audio will default to the speaker system built into the actual secondary display. So if I go right here and let's say I open up this video, let it play out, it's going to play from the secondary display audio source. I have not found a way to make the iPad a main audio source, but that was always the case, even if you were using with iPad OS 15 and 14. So the only way to get out of that audio is to use Bluetooth headphones. When you do use Bluetooth headphones, then you're able to have the audio source go to the headphones as opposed to the actual secondary display. But even again, I just kind of want to keep reiterating that this is in beta and you can see that it's a little bit broken, right? This is an empty white space that shouldn't be there. The screen is cut in half. If I resize it, it kind of fixes itself because it doesn't know what mode or what size it wants to be on. It doesn't know if it's in full screen size mode or in multitasking mode. So I do think that's also on the third party developer side to again code for this new form of stage manager or this new form of multitasking. And to stay on that audio source, if I do grab a secondary audio source like a YouTube TV, hopefully it loads up. Unfortunately, if you have two audio sources going at once, it won't actually happen. So if I press play here, come over here and press play on YouTube TV, it'll actually pause YouTube and go to YouTube TV's audio source. So you can only have one audio source playing at the same time. Something else that's relatively important to show off is what happens when you turn off Stage Manager and you have all of these apps open, right? So you can see that I clicked on the control panel on the actual secondary display and it's still open down here. So if I turn off Stage Manager, we go straight into the old multitasking mode down here but up here it stays in stage manager mode. And I don't know if that's on purpose, if that's a feature, what the case is, because honestly it could be nice depending on the aspect ratio you have on the secondary display to maybe go with the traditional version of multitasking down here, which we've seen and grown to either love or hate. But if then again, if I click on here, go back into multitasking mode, everything kind of goes back to that stage manager mode that we were in before. So now let's actually talk about gaming with the iPad Pro in stage manager mode. So I have my Xbox controller right here. I'm a big fan of NBA 2K and Apple Arcade. 
So if I open it on the bottom screen, everything works normal, right? So it opens up as advertised. So I still have access with my mouse to go up here and let's say edit a video or while I'm waiting for it to render, I can probably play this NBA 2K game. But I have to go back here, click on the screen and then move over, go to my association, let it load up and I'm good to go. But then if I do wanna actually move the application up to the main display, you can see that it kind of breaks a little bit. So we'll move it to the display. It doesn't know what to do. It has no idea what to do. It's stuck in this weird like portrait landscape mode and it's not in the correct orientation. So that's something Apple really needs to fix. So now let's talk about video conference calls and multitasking on the iPad Pro. It kind of works, it kind of doesn't, it depends on the application, it depends on which monitor you're using, it depends on that perfect instance. So let's start up just a random meeting. We'll start one up, you can see that I'm right there, hello, hello, but the moment that I move it into that secondary display up here, the video kind of breaks, it doesn't really work, it's blurred out, and then when I move it back down to the main display, it loads up again. And now if I wanna pull in, let's say the files application from over here, the video kind of stays on, kind of cuts out sometimes. And if, again, if I move it up to the secondary display, then the video again cuts out, which is kind of annoying. Let's move it back down and maybe open up Safari up here. Then you see that it kind of does work. So it's kind of hit or miss depending on the application you use. And if you share your screen, I'm gonna share my screen. We'll start the broadcast. Things kind of break down here. The secondary monitor support is completely gone. We revert back to the black bars, which with an ultra wide monitor is very crazy and it's only going to screen share what's on the main screen, and that's what everybody's gonna see. So as you saw there, it did break everything down. It's absolutely not really ready for that situation, and from all my testing, I don't know if Apple's going to bring that and make that a native feature, if third-party applications are gonna need to code for that. It seems to work in some instances, but at this point, obviously, in a beta three iteration, I'm not gonna go ahead and recommend that you use this as your main Zoom machine and have to multitask all over the place. Two last tidbits that I did want to share about Stage Manager is if you go into the control panel and you long press on the Stage Manager button, you have the ability to have these two menus persist or not persist. So if you want a little extra screen real estate, you can see on the left hand side, we got a little bit more of our screen back because we got rid of that multitasking shelf or whatever Apple's going to call that, but you can bring it back and you can also keep the dock there as a persistent kind of situation with it. But again, sometimes it doesn't really work. Sometimes it's like this is supposed to stay there forever when I do click that button, but obviously when it does release to the public, those will be good to go. And then lastly, what I wanted to show you guys is the best way that I can show off being able to use more than one secondary display. If we go into a display and brightness, we actually have the ability to change up the arrangement. So it looks like we're able to have up to four different monitors or four different displays running off of one iPad. I have not been able to fully test that because we only have one monitor here in the studio, this ultra wide that I have right above it but it looks like you are able to arrange the monitors wherever you see fit, just like you would in display settings on a regular Mac computer. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, iPad OS 16 obviously still has a ways to go. It's still very buggy. It's still, I still don't know if there's some features that are missing or there's features that they omitted, but overall I'm extremely excited for what iPad OS 16 is finally bringing to the iPad Pro, which is something a lot more familiar. And it's the same thing that they did with cursor support with 13.4 where it's bringing kind of a feature or a technology or something that we're used to, bringing it to the iPad Pro, but bringing it with its own flavor, right? With Apple's cursor support, it obviously it resembled a mouse, it worked like a mouse, it was a point and click situation, but it was still unique to the iPad Pro and iPad OS. And that's what Stage Manager is, right? It's floating windows, it's multitasking with more than two applications side by side, but it's still very unique to iPad OS and that ecosystem of iPad Pros with M1s and I guess the iPad Air. So with some of these features that I showed off, is this enough to get you guys to move from, let's say Mac OS or Windows classic situation, classic computing device, to now having the iPad Pro being your full-time device because now you have floating windows. Now, depending on the application, you can video chat and multitask without the video going out. You have secondary monitor support. You have the ability to have multiple instances of applications floating side by side and manipulating data from PowerPoints and Word documents, which is something that I do on a daily basis. So overall, I think iPadOS 16 and Stage Manager in particular is a big step forward and Apple is gonna keep iterating on this with new 16.1, 16.2, and 17.0 when that comes in the following year. But that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you did make it to the very end, leave a little dolphin in the comments below so I know you made it to the very end. And big shout out to 9to5Mac for bringing me onto the team. I'm very excited to bring a lot of iPad-focused content, but then also dabble with some iOS 
and macOS things and kind of encompass that whole Apple ecosystem. But if you guys want to check out some more macOS, iOS, or iPadOS videos, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, everybody, I'm out of here.